For the third week then of this performance theme, I want to look at putting some of this information that we've ga gathered from the theatre interiors and working with our model, performer and audience member, putting them together into some sort of composition. And for those of you that don't have a particular direction that you want to, to take this theme in, I will make some suggestions. These are the things that I'm going to aim for. Uh, this is the challenge that I've set myself um, for putting all this information to work. I want to make an inventive or surprising composition, something unusual. I want to have at least two figures. I want them to be in a performance setting. And then an extra thing, I don't know if this will make sense, but I think there should be one more element some kind of prop or a, a sort of accessory, something which is specific to the, the performance setting. Uh, and it could be an architectural fe feature or uh, something of that sort. So um, I have got my drawings, uh, the theatre ones I did the first week, some of the hatched and tonal um, drawings I did of Comanche's poses. In the studio on Monday, I'll have collage and mono printing materials for those who want to work with those techniques, if you've been finding that a useful way. But I think for this demonstration, I'm going to do the charcoal rub away approach. And I've got a little bit of an idea which is, and is partly inspired by seeing some of those Everett Shin drawings. I want to have two, the two um, audience members. So I've got my drawings here. Of Komachi with her program and with her um, opera glasses. And I want them to be in a way, the most obvious part of the composition. So I was thinking if I could have a kind of stage here and be backstage, or the, the viewer in this, looking at this image would be backstage, then we'd have, we could have a couple of Comanche figures here, one there and one there, with the opera glasses. So that's where my two figures are going to be. I don't think you can see them yet, but that's all right. You know, the, the, the rub away, like the mono printing or the collage, is something that I want to start very loosely so that I can change things around. So they're going to be sitting there in their seats. And then because I'm going for a view from backstage, I thought what I could do is take one of these performer drawings and just do it as a silhouette. So I think, probably apart from the feet actually, if I do this as a silhouette, then it should make sense because will look the same from the back and can be reversed by changing the feet. But I, I also wondered if I would even get to the feet. So that's those are the elements that I'm thinking of working with for an unusual composition. I like to think this is unusual. Here we are backstage looking into what's going to be quite a dark auditorium. Um, I've got at least two figures, so maybe I can rub away a bit first just to get the stage working. But the fourth thing that I had set myself as a challenge was some sort of theatre prop or um, architectural element or something. And I, I just wondered if and again, I've, I've stolen this a bit from some of the images that I've looked at and have been showing you of the theatre, but often 
and particularly in Everett Shin, you do get the very edge of the stage. I suppose it's the proscenium arch, maybe even a curtain. And I'm just wondering if I can do something over here where um, I've got a light shape, a silhouetted. Actually, I quite like that because I, I didn't want my performer to be too important. Um, that's why I want them to be a bit of a silhouette. So let's do a little bit more just with this charcoal shape. I'll see how much I can get away with by only putting a dark shape. I'm probably, because of all the light, I'm going to try and get some light onto this, one of the edges of this performer. But I think, I think that could work. Possibly this proscenium arch needs to be like that. And since it says something about a theatre prop or um, architectural feature, I might even try and do something clever on there. At the, the festival theatre, there were all sorts of the flowery style decorations. So I might try and do something in that, at that point there. And then actually I'm fairly enthusiastic about this because at the moment, I mean, it's an early stage of the drawing, but it's often good to take stock of these early stages. In this state, I like the way these figures are a little bit murky. So I'm going to carry on my hatching technique and do a little bit more to them. But try and see if I can keep them a little bit lost the way they are at the moment. I have hit upon a snag because her, this figure with her opera glasses is probably not even looking at the performer. But I'm going to proceed for now because I think it's probably more useful to, to just keep going so you can see what, what the next stages could be. But I'm hoping that I'm satisfying some of these challenges that this is in an interesting unusual composition and I've got as I say two figures so now it's very much about how I'm going to continue to direct people's attention and this I think is where charcoal rub away drawings can be really helpful because it's a process really of bringing things out. So if you can keep that in mind and not just bring everything out, but be very selective about what you bring out. So I've got a bit of a pattern of seats now behind these two audience members. Something like that. So I'm keeping a reasonable balance between my silhouette on stage and the audience figures. I did have an idea that maybe there would be some light on this silhouette. Now I'm making it up course but it's a fairly simple logic that there should be light on the right side so 
So that's the light on that figure. And then I want, just want to see, Kamat, she did have some light parts to her clothing. And also when she was modeling, she was spotlit. So I'm just bringing some of that out, but I don't want her to be too, too strong. And then the other one, the same. This, of course, is the story of the twins who went to the theatre and wore the same clothes. One of them watched the performer and the other just looked up at the boxes. But anyway. So that's, that's where I'm going to leave that stage. And I think I'll spray it now because I could then try some colour. continue then I hope with the colour to manage the the attention that um, my figures get whether they be figures um, on stage or in the auditorium and this is my curtain so I might be able to get some good rich curtain colour in there uh, I, I've got to do a little bit of work on these floral things. Okay, let's pause while I spray. So having sprayed my charcoal underdrawing, I'm now going to apply some colour and I'm going to use the drawings that I did from the Festival Theatre um, as a colour reference. So I've got these various reds and ochres and browns. I might start with a bit more light on the stage. Oops. I don't know if that's it's not really looking very light. If I had um, worked with monoprint or collage, I could have, of course, moved these figures around a bit because that was something that I wasn't entirely happy with. Whether the twin on the left should be paying more attention to what's actually happening on the stage and whether I in the same clothing. But again, because I don't want colour to disrupt this balance, I've tried to create a balance where the emphasis is... Well, I suppose the emphasis I'm after is looking into this dark auditorium and finding the figures in the dark, so not making them too obvious. So what will we do? Maybe not white. I might try some things like where I might have put white in her clothing. I might just try some gray. Just a tiny amount of tiny amount of colour on the face. Question is what colour dress should the twins have? And the seating I'm gonna bring out a kind of brown wooden seating. So I'm proceeding a little bit cautiously. But the nice thing, of course, with either monoprinting or charcoal rub away, possibly even a bit with collage, is that you can proceed gradually from a suggestion to making those suggestions more and more explicit 
and it makes sense to me to work a bit actually with the background and to apply the charcoal, the, the pastel, in a, um, a hatch sort of open way. So I can apply colour, but in a provisional way. And I can allow the, the dark areas underneath to show through. And if I want to turn up the colour, you know, maybe there's a bit more light at their feet coming from the stage. Then I just load on a bit more of the of the pastel. I don't know whether the seat back should get a little bit of light. And twin number two has got her program in her hand. So I think I won't give them a red dress. I think something dark. Maybe something dark and a bit cool. I'm not sure. But just hardly any colour. That's better. So, that's the direction I'm going in. And of course, what I need to do is stand back a lot. I fulfilled the um, aims that I had, but now it's very much a case of developing it, particularly with color and keeping a certain balance. And that means, you know, I've got to do something with this figure. I don't know what yet, and I think I need to go back a little bit. I'm going to stay silhouetted, but whether I make some changes with um, with colour looks like a two-dimensional person at the moment. But there might be some changes I can introduce. So, that's as far as I want to take that, I think. Uh, and maybe just recap then. So, I suppose I'm challenging you too to um, work with these things then. An inventive, surprising composition, more than two figures, some sort of performance setting, and then a prop, an accessory, an architectural feature to do with the performance theme. And I'll see some of you on Monday in the studio where we'll be able to use some of these other techniques such as um, monoprinting and collage. And I think if you're aiming for something inventive then to have a, a technique that can easily be changed will be helpful in that respect. Okay, well I'll see you then.